So, as you all know, back pain is very common. Uh, I suspect that many of you have either got or have had back pain. That may be why you've come. Um, uh, you may well have close friends or relatives with back pain. And, and surveys say that anything up to 80% uh, or so of, of us at some point in our lives will experience um, episodes of back pain. Now, I'm going to put up uh, I'm going to put up four slides, which I've broken up into four bits there, but I'll show in slightly larger detail to really illustrate some of the issues about why we may get back pain. It is really, although it's so common, we still we don't understand it all that well. So, if we look at the bones, the, this this is a uh, plastic model of the spine. Uh, looking at the lumbar spine, the low part of the back, and um, <coughs> the, the, each bone is called the vertebra, and between it is uh, a, a three joints, a big one, which is the intervertebral disc, which Jill is going to talk a bit more about, um, and two smaller joints, which are called facet joints, or apophyseal joints, behind. And between, the, there is effectively a tube which carries the spinal cord, um, the, the spinal cord ends actually in the upper lumbar spine. Um, just trying to get the point or so round about up here. And then it breaks up into a bundle of nerves called the corda equina, which is Latin for horse's tail. And, it, it's, uh, and it, that's very much what it looks like. So um, that's what you start off with. But unfortunately, things change as the years go by. and um, you end up with um, a spine which is probably a bit shorter, mainly because the discs get narrower, and, um, and we also get a bit more bent, and I'll we'll talk about that um, in a minute. Now, this is an MRI scan of the spine, and everybody's heard of MRI scans and see MRIs as the great miracle for solving back pain. It does tell us a bit more about the anatomy, but again, we can find things wrong with everybody, and uh, so it's not necessarily a, a total blessing. But it, I think, on balance, it has told us much more. Uh, it's done much more good than harm. Anyhow, this is as close as you will get to, uh, to a normal MRI scan, and this is effectively a very thin slice set up the same way round as the, um, the previous picture. And you can see the vertebral body cut through these. These are the sort of child's building blocks effectively and between them are, are the intervertebral disc and, and Jill will explain a bit more about the anatomy. You can see the spinal cord behind ending here and then breaking up into a bundle of, of nerves. The white is a sac of fluid in which it all floats and this individual has got a nice big canal, plenty of space for the nerves. Some people have very narrow canals um, called spinal stenosis and that can be uh, quite a significant problem for back pain. Now I've put up here um, a traditional drawing of the whole spine to illustrate the point that we are designed to stand upright. We're designed to stand with our heads over our hips, over our feet. And unfortunately with the advancing years we tend to get more uh, bent forward. Um, and uh, to some extent, you can compensate for that by extending your hips or extending your spine. But we've come to realize that people lose what's called sagittal balance, the capacity to keep their head over their hips. And this is, may also be quite a potent source of, of back pain. And then the whole structure is supported and controlled by a very complicated system of muscles and ligaments. And just for you to be able to sit in, uh, in these seats without falling on the floor requires a complex control system. And you can, uh, most people can get up and walk out of the room without really thinking about the, what's involved. And that complex system probably goes wrong in people with back pain. And we, we know that people with chronic back pain have got impaired postural control. So that we think the muscles and ligaments are very important, but they are um, still not very well understood in detail. So I've illustrated four aspects of the anatomy of the spine. So why do we get back pain? Now the honest answer is that nobody is certain, and 
And it's likely that in any individual, there are a variety of reasons which are contributing to it. And um, back pain is very much a, a human condition, although um, it's likely to occur in, uh, at least it's known to occur in some mammals, notably dogs and horses, which, which um, uh, we're familiar with, but um, other animals we don't really know. But we stand upright, which does really distinguish us from all other mammals. Um, we can communicate our feelings, so um, pain is something that we talk about quite a lot. Um, we are also lazy and don't exercise, and, and more and more we've come to realize that fitness and exercise are really important for keeping the back muscle, um, uh, muscles working properly. And finally, we live in a complex society, and we've perhaps seen some of that over the last week or two, that there are uh, many temptations out there for secondary gains, which do influence how people respond to uh, back pain, uh, and people respond in different ways uh, to that. So, when you start making lists, then we end up in very small writing, which I'm sure many of you can't read, um, but it's really just to illustrate that there are a variety of different reasons why people get pain. So that genetics are important, we know that these things run in families. And I've highlighted disc degeneration, which is what Jill's going to talk about, in each of, under each of those headings. Uh, environment, uh, exercise, the work environment, uh, smoking, all of these may contribute to uh, disc degeneration and other aspects of back. I've mentioned already sagittal balance and the importance of being able to stand upright. So everything that goes wrong with our backs tends to make us bend forward, and the word is kyphosing. Uh, kyphosis is the word for a forward bend in the spine. Postural control I've also mentioned, and um, it may well be that the, as the disc degenerates, it alters the uh, mechanics and movement of the individual segments. And that may be important in why some people get back pain. And finally, spinal stenosis, the narrowing of the canal, that is certainly accentuated by the process of disc degeneration. So it's a very important uh, common um, factor in many of the different reasons why I'm And um, we think it's, uh, a, I mean, it is a normal process. It happens in all of us. Um, and there are some forms of it which you're familiar with, so-called slip disc or prolapse disc, which is a very much a familial condition. Uh, we've come to realize that genetics is a major part of it. And um, the, that process may distort the anatomy and, and compress nerves or, um, and, uh, as they come down and out of the spine, giving uh, pain where those nerves go to, down the legs, they're called sciatic. And I've illustrated, again rather perhaps too small in the corner, um, an example of, of um, disc degeneration uh, down here. You can see that's a fairly normal disc, but that one's a very narrow disc, <coughs> and it also looks rather blacker on the sequence. So that's what happens um, as the disc degenerates. <coughs> so the title was to say, does surgery work to help this very complex and poorly understood process. 